Hello again, Mel. Hello again, Tim. Loving the environment that you're in at the moment. Thank you for our viewers. Yeah. Um, and welcome back. If you are watching this, having watched the little short introduction version to this. Uh, so this is a, let's just say, more expansive conversation um, between Mel and I about our lens on learning, which is really speaking to our experience of learning and why, in a nutshell, we're inviting learning to happen in the way that we are in being leaders. And maybe if I can expand on that a little bit further, we've taken our audience on a bit of a journey as to what got us here. And this is a critical component of that journey. And we wanted to share with you all, I guess, our experiences led to the launch of the Being Leaders or the evolution of the Being Leaders program. So, Tim, why don't you start us off? Why, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your lens on learning and some of the experiences that you've had and that you bring into this program? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not going to go into the details of, but essentially, no. like my education experience covers going to school, going to university, Tick, tick. Work, <laughs> place based training programs, yeah. many in corporate, um, and then, you know, certification programs, you know, condensed learning experiences. For me, the shortest of which would be one day, the longest of which would be 12 months. Yeah. Um, and within the vast majority of that, what's consistent is I am a student. I am there to receive knowledge, sometimes just information, but the intention is knowledge, um, and increase my understanding of what that knowledge is and hopefully the relevance of that knowledge in my work, right? Like I think that's kind of about as condensed as I can do it. And then the very, very, very slim minority of those learning experiences it's doing the learning in the place where the learning actually is going to be practiced um, and the learning itself being designed around my world my work my context and how the learning is not just relevant to me um, but how I contribute to the learning and how my context and the journey that I've been on ever since I started journeying with learning is actually informing the learning experience, like very, 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 very small amount of that. Hmm. Um, I started off by uh, ticking some boxes and I thought I better stop because I was just going to keep ticking all of them. Um, but it's fair to say, and it's probably why we do work together so well and we collaborate so much. My experience, my learning journey is very similar uh, the longest program certification program that I've been on, that's probably the only difference, is 18 months. Um, but the experience is very um, similar. And I guess, you know, we we go along to that. You talked about receiving and contributing, and that really resonated with me um, because the first, and I think the, the priority as to why we go along is we feel like we need to and want to receive something. Um, but also there is this element of being able to contribute and share with others in the journey, which becomes a part of our own learning as well. Um, and I just, is it okay if I just step into some of my experiences around how I've received? Yeah, absolutely. Can I just say yeah. one thing? I just yeah. want to anchor it for us to come back to because I forgot about it, which is community of practice. So just, I want to come back oh. to community of practice. I know without you, I know you talk about that, but yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, and so, you know, I was reflecting on this when we decided to do this video as to what my experience has been like. And, you know, maybe if I can anchor, I don't want to talk to all of them, but anchor it by talking to perhaps not the most enjoyable experience versus the most <laughs> transformational, right? And sure, I've had everything. Let's do that. Yeah, right. Um, so the one that probably I didn't find as enjoyable or I didn't feel like I could receive as much was where I, my attention and my focus 
wasn't held or I may have gone in and felt that, you know, maybe this isn't as relevant just yet, but I'll hold on. Um, or maybe I felt that the um, conversation or the way that it was being structured was not really engaging me in the content. So it's this idea that I just, I wasn't engaged in the content and therefore I lost focus. Um, and maybe it was a little bit too much content. You know, the online learning, Tim, for me, I've, I've tried it, I really have, and I try and anchor to it, but I find I don't receive as much from that as would I, as what I would from, you know, even just a nourishing, nourishing conversation like this one. Right through to the other end where, and there's a few that sit in this other end category, there's a component of it where it allows space for a little bit of content to be received, but then for the, you know, whether you refer to it as a community or practice or as a collective or as participants, it allows for the participants to take from that content what they need um, and really reflect and sit with it and hold space for deepening their understanding of the content and then a safe space for that sort of practice to create that embodiment. And this cycle has been repeated um, all the way through the program. Yeah, I'm, so if I respond with, um, yeah, a couple of um, examples. So... Yeah, I think the least enjoyable, least fun, least value creating, least generative learning experiences would all be content centric. Yeah. Right. To me, actually, it doesn't make a difference whether or not the content is hosted in person, virtually recorded. Or, I mean, pre-recorded is definitely the least beneficial, I think, actually. But mm. it doesn't, doesn't make a difference so much for me. Um, you know, I've been kind of practicing this remote stuff um, for at least a decade at this point. So I think I'm kind of tuned in a little bit. But yeah, if it's if it's content, if it's a presentation, if it's like anything that, that doesn't have any level of um, yeah, relevance and inquiry about me and where I am and you know the community and groups that I'm embedded within and part of, um, then at best it's it, it it's it's just my capacity to absorb that information like that kind of defines what the learning is and then the most transformative experiences are yeah always in groups always shared um mm. and the, the shared bit means that you know there is that at least multi-directional flow of dialogue um and hopefully a polydirectional flow so it's not just instructor ask you a question, information comes back, right? It's like there's kind of information flowing all around the group with yeah. the convener is, is just in there kind of amongst it, maybe doing a little bit to direct the flow. Um, and then also like experiences that are very much, well, there you go. There's one word that's operative, an experience, right? Not just a convection of information that is absorbed, but actually create an experience of learning in the moment um, you know, so an example would be like a fishbowl practice, right? Where someone is invited to bring a project, you know, or, or a context or a problem. Whatever it might be. Yeah. Whatever it may be, you know, and then really all that the, um, you know, sort of learning activator is doing is providing explicit frameworks to explore that project or context or problem through. Uh, it's all about what's happening, what's coming up for the uh, the learner, how they're shifting in the moment, how they're inflecting on, on their own understanding of their context and project in the moment. And everybody else is having a shared experience, initially sort of witnessing and then sharing back. But again, for me, the really generative versions of these fishbowls are when the sharing back is about the learning experience, not pouring in more content or advice or, you know, oh, yeah, I've seen this before and what I did was and it worked really well for me, so therefore you should, right? Like, not that. <laughs> yeah, no. And and if I can add to that as well, um, you know, as you were talking through that and I was reflecting on my own transformational experiences, I think the other element for me is, um, and I'm going to anchor to this word longevity, 
Um, so, but I just want to unpack that. And what I mean by that is it isn't just a once off. Um, it isn't, and certainly there's benefit in doing this in a, you know, a sort of a once off scenario as well, but you come back and you continue this practice, you continue this community of inquiry. So there's longevity in it. And the longevity can either be in the number of days that are strung together or it's over a period of time. So I was going to say, you know, from the a day perspective, I've had a five-day intensive program where there was this continued practice of, you know, content, inquiring about the content, safe practice, community of inquiry. We come back, we expand on it and we do it again and we did that over a five-day period and you and I have done it in you know other um, forms of being leaders over a much longer period and I think what happens there is we get to this point of really sustaining change in the way that we go about doing or being and I think for me when I when I sit back and reflect on what is a great experience? What is a transformational experience? It is one that has injected a different way of being, but a way of being that's different that feels right for me. Mm. Yeah, so I would, I'm would. i just going to add two things and a reframe. Um, so I met, touched on communities of practice earlier and, yeah, like the exception, the omission actually that I made earlier was, all of the most generative learning experiences I've had have been in tenured communities of practice. Tenured, so, that's a better word, not longevity. Well, I mean, longevity is, is in there. Um, yeah, so, and, and quite often, I think the most apt description of these communities of practice are developmental communities, right? You are coming mm. together to commune mm. for mm. the purpose of developing together. Mm. Um, and that that is reciprocal and kind of you're, you're doing it together. So this is kind of co-evolving development. Um, and yes, so within the learning experience like I mentioned earlier, there would be several examples of ongoing participation in communities of practice that are developmental, which at this point in time would be over multiple years. And the reframe is um, just of one of the words um, that you offered there, like my reframe of inject is invite, mm. right? Um, and I think it's a perpetual invitation for every individual and the kind of collective to continue to go on this development journey moment by moment in the, in the learning environment and in the world, which you continue to be in whilst you're on the developmental journey. Yeah. Um, so guess what, person watching this, all of the stuff... <laughs> This is a very, not very well, you know, sort of wrapped up, you know, sort of reference back to being leaders. Like all of the stuff that we're talking about, <laughs> saying this is the good stuff, this is the transformative stuff. Like essentially this is the intention that we're holding is to bring all of that into being leaders. da -da! I was, uh, you just stole the words out of my mouth, I was going to say, and the reason why this is all important is that is our intention, isn't it, Tim? We want to create a community of practice and a space where people feel that for them there is, and we invite um, this level of transition and change and sust sustaining the change as well, but where people feel that they have been able to evolve, they have been able to layer what it is that they do and how they lead. And so in being intentional, I guess that's what then led us to the um, integrative development framework and that is what we have wrapped around the Bean Leaders program. So it's probably an opportune time to invite our listeners, Tim, to find out more about the Bean Leaders program and we are launching in March or thereabouts our first cohort. Yep. Um, and so this is the opportunity. We invite you, connect with us, ask us some questions, visit our landing page, which will be in the link below, um, and um, register your interest to join um, the cohort starting March in 2023. I can't believe we're saying 2023. Oh, absolutely. So one other thing as well, um, if you've made it this far through this video, congratulations, because it's about to yes. be a minute threshold. So thank you for your time and attention, <laughs> most sincerely. Good on you. Um, so the and is that between now 
6th of December and 6th of December 2022 and March 2023 um, do accept invitations that may be explicit or implicitly sort of shown to you to come and experience this in a micro form. So Mel and I are going to host a series of events essentially containing the learning flow, um, you know, come and basically feel out and sense into the experiential design of these programs in a very, very condensed way. Um, and you tell us, is this yeah. very, very familiar and yet yeah, done this before and it's great or it doesn't work for me because, or is it different? Is it new? Is it unfamiliar? And does it feel appealing and you want to learn more or I don't like it and I'm uncomfortable beyond the point where I can learn? And I think on that note, we might leave it there. So come and join our Being Leaders Circle um, and also um, get in touch and let us know what other questions you might have. I'm sure there are many. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Hopefully see you in the circle. See you in the circle.